Hi, I'm Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of today's newsletter is going to be romantic attraction is created between highly polarized masculine and feminine energy. Well, this particular email is from a guy, I guess he started studying my work, and he sends in, he's asking about the the balance because he realizes now you got to be strategic and how you show up in your relationships to make sure you have the right polarity. And so he brings up a lot of other very famous people, obviously several of them I believe most of you have heard of. Some of them, even I look at these names, I don't know who the hell they are. But he was saying that how they have, these people had a, what he perceived as a balance, where they had both masculine and feminine type of energy. So he's asking about the polarity. Because most, I'd say probably 99% of my phone sessions are with heterosexual guys, but I also have lesbian clients, I have gay clients, and I got some trans clients. And in all relationships, doesn't matter how what type of people you're attracted to, you have to have strong sexual polarity. In heterosexual relationships, the strongest attraction, the strongest romantic attraction is where you're going to have a highly polarized masculine man and a highly polarized feminine woman. But the more they're alike in their energies, the less the romantic attraction is. In other words, the less there are differences and the more similar they become. And the more similar they become, the more unattracted the woman becomes. And the same thing happens in gay and, and lesbian relationships. If the masculine essence is acting too effeminate and girly, then the feminine essence that they're attracted to becomes turned off. And what happens is the polarity becomes like platonic roommates where they literally completely lose interest in having sex or being intimate with one another. And over the years, I've done so many phone sessions where whether it's a lesbian or a gay dude or mostly obviously heterosexual people, and most of my clients only have to do one phone session with, especially when this is the issue, because once they recognize, because one of the first things I always ask, especially for the gay and lesbian crowd, is like, what is your more dominant essence? Do you feel more masculine? Do you identify most of the time being more masculine or more feminine? And based on their answer is the behaviors that I discuss with them that they need to exhibit in order to reattract their mate, their husband, wife, whatever it happens girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever it happens to be. And so obviously heterosexual guys really struggle with this because when you look at what's on TV and the movies, the whole archetype that's being presented to us is men acting like women and women acting like men. And so whether you realize it or not, when you grow up and you spend many decades seeing that same archetype over and over and over, and plus you have the emotional anchoring that happens in those movies and those TV shows where they use sound effects they use music and they use very highly, tensely, emotionally charged scenes. When you watch it and you identify with those particular characters, whether you realize it or not, you're being emotionally anchored to dysfunctional behavior. And then when you go out in the real world and behave like you see in the movies, it repulses the person you're trying to attract. And so the first thing, obviously, is awareness of it. What What is highly polarized masculine energy? What is highly polarized feminine energy? So with that in mind, let's go through his email. So he says, hello, Corey. So I'd like to talk about a particular type of personality that has existed throughout time that is very strange. And I know that with a lot of your videos, you're talking about how a man needs to be masculine, how to lead is to calming rain, and has a capability to calm that feminine energy that is chaotic and considered unstable. Well, feminine energy is chaos. I mean, just look at Mother Nature. How often does the weather report actually turn out to be accurate or legit? Not very often. And getting upset about bad weather when it was forecasted to be a sunny day, it's going to be a waste of your energy. It's going to frustrate you and upset you. And the only thing you really can do is just accept it because love is allowing after all, right? And so when you love Mother Nature, you see the storms, but you don't become moved by it. You don't become upset by it. You're just calm. Masculinity is calm. Masculinity is like the mountain. And so Mother Nature, the winds and the rains, they blow around the mountain or they go over the mountain. They don't go through the mountain. They go around it. 
So as a man, you got to kind of, or a masculine essence, you have to think of yourself as calm, cool, collected, peaceful, relaxed, because you're going to do your best work when you're in a peaceful and relaxed state. And so that allows, when you bring that calmness, that allows the chaotic woman to bring her emotions and her feelings and her mood swings, and she feels safe enough to express those. And if the guy or the masculine essence is not calm and he's chaotic and upset and overly emotional, well, then the feminine essence does not feel safe being feminine because there's no masculine container to provide the safety. And so therefore, what happens, the chaotic feminine gets even more chaotic. And what happens, the guy doesn't know how to, how to handle it and it just spirals out of control like two emotionally irrational women in a relationship with one another. Even though they might be the opposite sexual polarity, when they act too similar, they're literally going to repulse one another where they're totally turned off. He says, but I have read some books that have talked about how both men and women have the ability to attract individuals because they do not simply exhibit characteristics that are solely masculine and feminine, but they're able to utilize both the characteristics in a way where it's not too feminine or too masculine. Well, men, we all have masculine and feminine energy. And so, but what is the most dominant? And so for guys, obviously, if they're attracted to feminine women, they need to be in their masculine if they want to keep the women attracted. But if you're too soft and too girly, as a matter of fact, there's a, a video I noticed on Twitter that's starting to go viral this past week where there's this attractive, blonde, self-professed, liberal woman. And she talks about how there's two types of guys and she's really upset about it. You have the masculine, conservative type of guys, which she says are toxic masculinity misogynistic and then you got the feminist guys the democratic guys but they're so soft and girly that they're unattractive and so she's attracted to the conservative guys but she idealizes or aligns with the effeminate guys that don't turn her on <clears throat> and so that that's what you see you have to have the balance you got to have the the polarity because when people act too similar they lose attraction now feminine energy is also creative energy so if you're a painter you're getting into your feminine energy you're letting that creativity flow through you you could be a masculine guy if you ever saw back in the day norm amarins is uh the new yankee workshop where he's in his workshop he's always you know he's got a big burly dude he's got a beard he's a carpenter i mean that's feminine energy what it takes to create those beautiful pieces that he makes by hand with all of the tools in his wood shop. But at the end of the day, when you listen to him, he's still a masculine guy. He's still a dude. So when it comes to being creative and doing his gift, he's able to move into his creativity, his feminine energy, without completely acting like an effeminate girl. So that's the difference. Same thing with like a musician, making a musician who makes music, which is interesting because there's so many of the people that are musicians obviously also tend to lean left. Especially like, you know, Rage Against the Machine, which is, I won't do what you tell me. But, you know, they've been getting roasted the last few years on Twitter because they're exactly what they said they used to, the, they're the opposite of what they said they stood for when... They were younger, like when I, you know, I was in my early twenties, and those guys were, were, you know, blowing up and doing well. He says it's so fascinating because how they're able to attract other individuals, and these are famous people like Frederick Nietzsche, and make them be most of what the people who are asking your help to be. That is failing to have control of themselves and have an essence of not becoming a three percent man. But here's some prime examples. Elvis Presley. Well, I mean, Elvis Presley is like girls got weak in the knees over him. But when you looked at him and watched him, especially when you watched stuff in the 50s, even though it was new and taboo, he was acting very effeminate and girly when he was dancing on stage. And so he could be very effeminate and play his music, 
But when he talked, he had a deep voice. He was incredibly handsome, and women just fell all over him. He says John F. Kennedy. I wouldn't say John F. Kennedy, Kennedy was effeminate at all. He was more of like a man's man. He wasn't a loyal and faithful husband, that's for sure. And there's plenty of stories and testimony from people that you know, he had girls coming over he was hooking up with in the White House, even though he was married. And he was president of the United States. Apparently Marin, Marilyn Monroe was one of them. Rodolfo Giuliani, I don't know who that is. Lou Andreas Salome, I have no idea who that is. He says, these are the type of people who gave off masculine and feminine energies. Well, maybe you could say John F. Kennedy's, his speeches were very aspirational. That takes creative energy. But as a man, I mean, if you look at what he did with staring down the Russians during the Cuban Missile Crisis, it's... He had to give the perception that unless they remove these nuclear missiles that are only 80 miles away from the United States, we're basically our country was basically ready to engage in, in essence, Armageddon to have them removed. But they also gave the Soviets, they gave Khrushchev a way out that he could save face with the hardliners so the world didn't get destroyed because one of the people in the ambassador to Russia – was had literally lived with Khrushchev and his wife. He and his wife had lived with Khrushchev and his wife on occasion when they were in Russia. And he knew him very well. And he also knew Khrushchev was surrounded by some moderates. But he also had a lot of hardliners in his inner circle. And the hardliners wanted to go to war. And so he's wrestling with destroy the world or maybe we can survive this. And Kennedy gave him an out because of the guy that was in his inner circle that had a personal relationship with Khrushchev. I mean, we came that close to total all-out nuclear destruction in Armageddon. That was before my time. It was before I was even born. And so that takes highly masculine energy to stand up to, at the time, the Soviets say, we're not backing down, but hey, if... And so the way Khrushchev was able to save face, he's like, well, the United States was going to go to war and basically destroy the world, and we, in essence, saved the planet. We took the missiles and saved humanity. We saved Cuba. It was a very humanitarian thing. It was very egalitarian of us to do. And then you look at, like, our current president. Things were pretty stable when Trump was in, supposedly, what Trump had said. And one of the interesting things, when you look back in the 1980s, you look at Ronald Reagan and his interactions with Gorbachev. And Gorbachev thought... Reagan was crazy and that he would push the button. In other words, he would go to a nuclear war. He was afraid of that. He was unpredictable. And supposedly, what Trump said to Putin when he was in office, he says, if you move on Ukraine, I will nuke Moscow and St. Petersburg. He supposedly also told Xi Jinping that if you move on Taiwan, I will nuke Beijing and Shanghai. And those are the kinds of things you're like, is he serious? Is he crazy? Is he bluffing? Those are the kinds of things where when you got somebody backed into a corner like that and they seem kind of nuts, it's like you're not going to screw with them. But then you look like at what happened when Joe Biden got into office. Look how he just let Afghanistan fall apart, just handed it back over to the, to the Taliban along with billions of dollars and in, in weapons that we just left there. And then look what happened when he was vice president under Barack Obama. Putin invaded Georgia. He invaded Ukraine. And what did they do? Obama wrote strongly worded letters. He did nothing. And so when Biden got back into office, everybody can see he's a geriatric. He doesn't have all his faculties. It's clear he's not running the country. It's obviously the people around him. The woke idiots that he's put around him are the ones actually running the country. What did he think was going to happen? That's why he invaded Ukraine, because he knew it's like the guy's senile. What's he going to do? Plus, Putin's FSB said, ah, three days will be treated as liberators. Pfft, it'll be a cakewalk. The war will be over in three days. Even people in our intelligence, you know, I think General Milley was saying Ukraine will hold out for like two weeks and then you know they'll lose the whole country. And so from Putin's perspective, weakness always invites aggression. And so we had a weak president. He had been vice president before and they did nothing. So obviously when he invaded this time around, it totally caught him off guard. And then when it wasn't such an easy cakewalk... 
the people in the FSB and the intelligence services are like, oh, yeah, the war will be over in three days. They're not even going to give up a fight. We'll be treated as liberators. He imprisoned all those guys. You know, it's, so it shows that the KGB or the FSB was about as competent as the CIA was when you look at weapons of mass destruction, how that turned out to all be bullshit. So weakness invites aggression. And so because we have a weak president, you've got Putin moved on Ukraine. And then, I mean, when you look at what he's talking about in the media, it's pretty clear that he has every intention of taking as much of Ukraine and some of these other countries back that used to be part of the Soviet Union that the West is going to let him get away with. I mean, you can look at the translated clips. They talk about it all the time on Russian TV. And even when Tucker Carlson was interviewing him, he, Putin goes on, he's talking about Catherine the Great and all these things, and Tucker wasn't really listening to him because he already had these preconceived notions about what was going on. He just thought it was all nonsense. But Putin was laying out his case. In other words, these are our historical lands. That's what they say. That's what they say in Russian TV. You can see the translated clips. There's several people on Twitter that translate these and put them, put them on there. It's you know what the average Russian is consuming is like, hey, these are our lands, your our historical lands, and we're taking them back. We're not going to let it go to the West. And the other thing what's interesting is Putin talks about all the the stuff going on with uh, all the rainbow stuff, if you will. I don't want to get too into it. I don't. I got to be careful what I say about those things. But he looks at that. He looks at the migration that's going on in Europe. He looks at what the World Economic Forum guys are doing. Again, these are stuff that appears in his speeches, which you can go read all the translations online for these. And it's pretty clear. He looks at that saying the West is basically committing suicide here. And so if he lets the West take over these areas that used to be the Soviet Union, he's like, they're going to end up eventually in the coming decades totally destroying the culture in those countries and they're going to be right on our border. So for him, he looks at it as like we're taking back our historical lands and we're not going to let the West totally destroy it. That's his mindset. That's his – whether you agree with it or not, I mean, again, you can see all this stuff. for your, It's on Twitter. All the speeches are out there. You can see tons of lectures and talks and things and even where he's talking with the press where he's explaining – his rationalization so we have a weak president so what happens you got a guy that's behaving like a bully and if you don't punch the bully in the mouth well he thinks you're too much of a pussy to do anything about it so he's going to keep taking it that's just that's the way it is whether you like it or not that's what's happening and look at all the stuff that happened with israel why did hamas attack now on october 7th this past year instead of when trump was in office because you had an alpha in the white house but with a geriatric in the White House, it's like it's, it's white sh the whole planet is on fire, basically. So back to our regularly scheduled email. He says, I'm wondering what are your thoughts about these individuals? Because hearing somebody's stories, if a man or a woman is able to give off feminine energies, but also give up a little bit of masculine, that can actually cause someone to be extremely attracted to them. Well, it's the dominance of the essence. There's nothing wrong with being a strong masculine man, but being a guy that can play a guitar and be creative and sit there with your daughter or one of your nieces and nephews and let, let her put makeup all over you and dress like a girl. This is like if if you've ever been a parent, whether it's part time or you've been a, a real parent or an aunt or an uncle, it's like when the kids want to put little girls want to put makeup on you, it's like, yeah, whatever. It's like let them have their fun. They want to play with your hair. It's like whatever. I was like, you're going to let them do it because they're kids. But that doesn't mean that you're a chick. It just means that you're able to play. You're able to experience joy. But at the end of the day, you're dangerous but kind. He says, but it also has to be done very strategically. There has to be a fine balance. Well, again, if there's not a strong sexual polarity and you're too similar – whether it's lesbians, gay dudes, heterosexual couples, the feminine essence is not going to want to sleep with the masculine essence because it's acting too much like a chick. That's a fact of life. If someone gives too much feminine energy, it's not good, it's chaotic, and it's not safe, and it's unattractive to women, or you could become their gay male girlfriend. True. That's why women in friend zone guys that act too effeminate and girly, they're not direct, they're not decisive, they just chit-chat on the phone like another chick – Instead of just making it, you know, getting to the point and making a date. Hearing stories of men being at their core as masculine, but there's also qualities of femininity that complement the, mas the masculine stability that is given from people who are masculine. 
and can really cause women to be attracted to men who behave like that as well. So it's a very strange phenomenon. Well, women are not going to stay attracted to a guy that's effeminate and girly all the time. That's what you also see like celebrities. You see some of these famous musicians or whatever that tend to be very effeminate and girly but they're also rich and successful and famous and they get up on stage which is very risky it's very dangerous it shows a lot of courage being courageous that's masculine energy and then they start dating these guys and then the guys act like chicks they're too feminine they're too girly and then what happens is they get dumped and they get their heart broken and then what happens when the musician gets his heart broken he writes this incredibly beautiful number one hit love song that is basically him crying about how he got his heart broken because the emotions are so raw, they're so intense, they're so strong, that vibe and that energy makes it into the music, the chords, the arrangement, everything that makes up the song, there's super intense emotions behind it. And that's why when you look at like hit songs, why so many of them tend to be sappy love songs where some musician got his heart broken by a girl he was dating. So just because you're attractive or you're rich and famous or successful, that might get your foot in the door. But if you act like a chick for too long, you can be handsome and buff and built, have a deep voice. But when you get around a girl, you act too nice, too feminine, too girly, she's going to lose interest and friend zone you and not want to sleep with you because she won't feel safe with you. She'll feel like she's hanging out with another girl, basically, instead of a man. And I think the reasons why women are attracted because it's an emotional connection that a woman feels that is a man giving to them that they can relate to in some ways, but there's, straight, there's certain energies, but it's not too much feminine uh, to the point they know the guy is over pursuing them like a woman. Yeah, some of the, like what this guy says here is not really making a lot of sense. It's like a mental circle jerk for him. In other words, what he seems to be doing is making an excuse that he's a little too much in his feminine. And he's trying to look around and go, oh, look at all these guys. They had feminine energy, so I should just stay the same. It's like, well, obviously you didn't write in because things are going well. You're, in essence, writing in and trying to validate your worldview. But the fact of the matter is I've been doing this for multiple decades, and I've done tens of thousands of phone sessions over the years and coaching the people through the internet, through email, and I see the same patterns over and over and over and over again. You know, success leaves clues. When you see the same patterns over and over and over again, you start to recognize that women are just as predictable as the sun coming up in the east and setting in the west, if you understand that. But again, if you're a man and you're attracted to a feminine woman, or if you're a lesbian, a, f a masculine lesbian attracted to feminine women, a feminine lesbian, or you're a, a masculine gay guy and you're attracted to effeminate girly dudes, it's like if you act too much like a chick, you're going to turn your partner off. That is a fact of life. And so you need the strong polarity. Without it, you're going to become loveless, sexless roommates. That's, I mean, when I do phone sessions, it's like I'm constantly talking to guys that have done that. They've acted too effeminate, too girly, because, again, they're propagandized by what they see on TV and the movies and they don't know any better and they don't understand what behaviors they're exhibiting that are detailed in three percent man that are causing the women to get total or the feminine essence to get totally turned off so you got to have the polarity if your natural essence is masculinity you need to be highly polarized as much as possible to your masculine because that's what's going to attract a feminine chaotic woman now i'm not talking about chaotic in a destructive sense or a rude sense or a woman that has emotional problems or mental health issues or anything like that i'm talking just a normal healthy woman gets emotional they cry things upset them and you have to be able to communicate with them make them feel heard and understood to where they feel it's safe to express themselves they feel it's safe to have a cry in front of you because you're not going to become emotional and girly but you're going to be the mountain you're going to be her rock so to speak so if you've got a question or a challenge and you'd like to get my help go to understandingrelationships.com click the products tab at the top of your screen on any page of my website and book a coaching session with yours truly until next time i will talk to you soon